Lord, buona sifiwe. So we are here at Word of Life Center uh, for the family altars um, and just dealing with generational altars and just revisiting the past. So that's the conference we're having here. And I'm very, very impressed by the people. Um, people have really, really come and arrived on time and are taking this seriously. And uh, that's the kind of um, determination that you need to be able to get ahead. The attacks have been very, very heavy. You have no idea. Yani, one day I'll have to tell you guys that story. But the attacks have been very heavy. Yesterday, I had full-blown malaria and uh, flu at the same time. But the Lord has taught me to be able to recognize the attack, you know, when Satan comes in the form of an attack. Um, actually, out of all the time that I've been ministering, I, we've never had greater attack than this. I think the one in the States before the family altars thing for the States was, it came close because that had really, really heavy attacks. But this one is like at a higher level. And typically what you expect to see is is just to know that the Lord is going to come through very heavily. This video is aimed at encouraging the children of God not to ever, ever, let the manipulative attacks of the enemy stand in your way. Never, ever, ever. Ever, ever, ever. And the thing is, the Bible promises that we'll have trouble. But for some reason, I think we don't even understand that, uh, that statement. Uh, you know, and the Lord says, I've already overcome. The Bible also teaches us about not holding on to our lives, not having anything. That way Satan cannot take anything from you. You know, you continue because you have nothing. Your life is not your own, even your own life. I think the thing with a lot of us is that we, we, we like to, um, you know, pray and seek God and, and attend even things that we are supposed to attend only when things are looking good. In that way, you'll never deal with some of these supernatural things like altars that have been there for thousands of years. You really think that the devil would actually take it lying down, that he's had dominion in your family, that he's had some legal right in your family, that he's man handled the altars of your family for thousands of years. And the day that you want to get him out and to throw him out, at he'll just sit there and, and, and let you go ahead. He will not. He will fight. He will fight. Actually, those who are coming, we nearly got into an accident. But I bless God, yesterday the intercessors met. I wasn't even able, able to go for that meeting. But I got a phone call from them and they, they quite a number of intercessors saw various kind of attacks. And at least I was pre-warned. But let me tell you, Yamatatu, we almost had a collision. Yani, I had to ask the team that I was with, have we hit each other? And then they said no. And even the driver looked at me in shock. He couldn't understand how or where. But the Lord delivered us. And I believe the Lord has already delivered us. So Satan throws tantrums. And he throws all sorts of things. One of the things I shared with you guys in a video in the past is how when the Lord was calling me into ministry, he tested different areas of my life. He tested, you know, my job. He tested my relationship with my children. He tested my marriage. Um, you know, and that was the process. And... Um, one day, you know, I remember, and I did share this, that the way he tested for my children, he told me, as you lay this child down to sleep, when you come back, he will be dead. She will be dead. It was a little girl. And I said, Father, I have a prayer meeting. If at all my child is supposed to die when I'm having the prayer meeting, then I will still praise you anyway, because she belongs to you. And I went to the living room and I said, you, you know, and I said to the Lord, you're more than able to stop my child from dying. I have an appointment. You knew I had an appointment. So for this child to get to the place where she's sick until she's about to die, and even she's, I mean, and everything was okay before, then so be it, Lord. But I will go according to your will. But I'm serving you. And right now, for the next two, three hours, I have a prayer meeting. And she's asleep. So let her sleep. So I left the room and went to the living room only for the Lord to tell me, go back and pick her. And that's how the Lord works with us. He will test, he will shake, he will move and everything. We just need to be aware when Satan is hit hitting us, but also aware that, you know, we cannot, you know, like I remember um, there was a time in my life when I would wake up and, and say, I'm going to pray. And on that day, somehow we we'll just have drama with my husband. Then I am so stressed, I'm so depressed, I don't go. Then the next Saturday again, I wake up, I'm planning to go and pray. Again, we start having drama until the Lord asks me, are you not seeing the pattern? 
Are you not seeing the pattern that every time you and your husband have a disagreement, you cannot pray? Are you not seeing the pattern? And I had to say, you know what? I have to dethrone my husband. I have to dethrone my husband. And day by day, the Lord taught me different things. My child is acting up. I cannot, I don't know, go and do what. My child is sick. I don't know, I cannot go to church. There are times where they went to church and, you know, it was a choice between going to, uh, to take the child to hospital or going to church and I'll tell the Lord, I had a ministry engagement today. I'm preaching. There's no other person that I can call to come and preach on short notice like this. We were heading to church. You're a God of order. You're a God who understands things. So Father, you heal her. Otherwise, if you don't heal her, we will have to go to hospital afterwards. You sustain. And the girl will be, oh, the, you know, the children will be, oh, I'm so sick. They are shaking like a leaf. And we go to church. And let me tell you, the service goes on very, very powerful. And after that, the child is actually completely well. As I'm asking her, okay, so we go to hospital. We're like, no, I'm okay. Why? You know? And that's how Satan is. Before every great miracle, before every great release of the glory of God, there'll be great resistance. But the trouble with so many of us is that we don't know. A lot of times we don't understand. I had somebody once call me when I was going through intense resistance in 2012. Satan came out with guns blazing. I don't think I've ever gone through worse than that. 2012, I went through such heavy attacks as in every direction and every place. And one of my prayer partners called me and asked me, uh, what did you do? So I asked her, what do you mean, what did you do? And she asked me, what did you do? I mean, all these things that are happening, you must have sinned. And I remember hanging up on that phone and I cried and cried. Then the Lord told me, her spiritual maturity, she does not understand. And stop taking things personally. But that's the thing. It will look as though you have sinned. It will look as though you did something. I mean, it was exactly what happened to Job. Yeah, Job was, was attacked. Job, Job went through everything, but nobody understood. And the fact of the matter is, as a Christian, you need to be able to understand the direction you're going in with God. You have to be able to understand how far you've come with him. You have to be able to understand when you check yourself and you're like, you know what, God, have I sinned? Won't you show me if I've sinned? And let him show you if there's sin. If there's no sin, keep moving because the attacks are coming from the enemy. Me. They're coming from Satan himself, not even from God, but they're coming from Satan himself. And guys, don't ever cancel a, a, a spiritual engagement because you're under attack. Whenever there's an attack, that's when you need to proceed because then you're going to have an amazing breakthrough every time. Every time. The greater the resistance, the greater the glory. It's something I began to see those days in the 90s as we were going to, 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 to Laiti. Every Sunday I would wake up not feeling like going to church. When I would wake up sick, when I would, you know, the night before, I don't know what would happen or something, the Lord began to tell me, that Sunday, now go to church for sure. And I would go and let me tell you the breakthrough I would get in church. I would come out of church thinking, what if I missed church today? What if I miss church today? Some of you wake up in the morning, you're discouraged, things have happened to you. I don't know, your landlord has done what to you and all that, and you fail to go to church that day. Go to church that day. That day Satan doesn't want you to go. Go to church and then confirm this. The greater the resistance, the greater the glory of God, and the greater the victory. The day that your word for unlocking you from great things, the day that your word for taking you to a greater level is being released, the day that you're going to encounter, including destiny helpers, by the way. I posted something last night. It has refused to come through. I've had to repost it again for some reason. You know, when I see no like or nothing, I always knew that that thing was blocked by Facebook. And I knew that it was something. Last night, I posted and I said, the enemy will try to attack you with your destiny helper. By the way, let me tell you, the person who's been sent into your life, because the Lord, when you pray, the Lord sends people. And he equips the people. And that person will be used by God to make a very big difference in your life. But whenever God sends your destiny helper, you will find yourself fighting with that destiny helper you'll find yourself unable to get along with them without even any single explanation you'll find yourself believing lies about what what you heard about them satan will send gossip and send uh, you know ideas of this is what they're thinking of me or people who will volunteer information to tell you they said this about you which they never did by the way do what i do when I hear someone has said something about me, not every time. Yeah, I mean, if I find once, twice, thrice, I confirmed it. And the fourth time, again, I'm still hearing that you're still saying, I always know, yeah, that's who you are. So I just learned to love you anyway and keep moving anyway and just know that you cannot be trusted. But otherwise, for me, if you are important enough in my life and I hear you have said something, normally I'll ask you. And normally I'll ask the person who's told me, can I tell them? So please note, Satan is using that. You hear, oh, they said this about you. Do you know that person never said that about you? Or you hear something else, whatever kind, um, that Nini, I'm doing a video. 
Yeah, so you hear all co- sorts of things and all that. So please note that Satan will always try that to separate you from your destiny helper. Keep moving and do not be unable to recognize destiny helpers. Do not be unable to recognize destiny helpers because then you may be blocking out the Lord. You may notice that when, um, uh, what's his name, Abraham was seated under the mamar tree and uh, the angels came to see him. When you read the scriptures there, it talks about God spoke and yet it's the angels who came. You may turn aside strangers or even people who are visiting you with the word of God as your destiny helper without realizing that that's the answer you've been looking for from God. When you pray, God will send people. Sometimes he'll not come himself. He will send people and use those people in your life. So be very, very careful. Those are the kind of attacks Satan is using. Oh, and by the way, right now, Satan is throwing the biggest of tantrums he can ever throw. I'm talking to believers. Guys are going through the craziest things you cannot believe. The Bible said in this world we'll have trouble. Hold on. The Lord Jesus is coming back soon for his church. Hold on. Satan wants you to quit. He wants you to give up. He wants you to think God has forgotten you. You know, for me, I've reached that place in my life, and I I reached this place some time back. I told God, I was born with nothing, and I leave this world with nothing. So no matter what happens, I will follow you even though you slay me. The words of Job, I will follow you even though you slay me. I lay claim to nothing. I can't be angry with God because I didn't get what I wanted. I can't be angry with God because I didn't go where I wanted. I can't be angry with God because he didn't do what I wanted him to do. I know my father loves me. I've reached that place where I know his intentions and the intentions of his heart and his character. And so it doesn't matter. I'm going to love him. I'm going to love him. How about you? Are you going to love him through the fire? Are you going to love him through the flood? Are you going to choose to trust him every day, regardless of what happens, regardless of what's going on? Are you going to hold on to him? Or are you going to keep on believing the lie that God has some wicked intentions instead of good plans for you, that God has failed, that God has not come through? Let me tell you, those are thoughts that will bring you down. Hold on to Jesus, regardless of what happens. He's wonderful. He's wonderful. And God will never let anything happen to you that is not for your own good. All things work together for good for those that love God and are called according to his purposes. Regardless of what you're going through, believe even this one. It shall work together for good. So long as you're walking in obedience, Satan has not found a legal ground in your life. So long as you're walking in the fear of the Lord, Satan has not found anything in your life. Keep moving. Keep moving and refuse to be the kind of person who I'll not pray today because I'm discouraged. If you're discouraged, take that discouragement before the Lord. The Bible talks about David encouraging himself in the Lord. Go and encourage yourself in the Lord. Listen to some worship and tell God, I choose to follow. I don't understand. This is painful. This is hard, but I choose to follow. This is difficult, Lord. I don't know how long I can hold on, but you strengthen me. I continue to follow you, Lord God. I have a covenant with you and the covenant is not a covenant of material wealth. The covenant is not a covenant of roses and even roses is half thorns. The covenant that I have with you is not a covenant of feathers. And even feathers have that hard place that can prick you. God is not raising up baby Christians. God is raising up soldiers for himself. We are in a war, guys. We are in a war. Keep moving, keep moving, keep moving. And whatever is good, whatever is noble, whatever is trustworthy, whatever is, you know that scripture, hold on to those things. Hold on to those things. Encourage yourself in the Lord. God bless you guys. Amen.